Hi class, today we are going to do a watercolor painting. I'm going to show you some awesome techniques to help get you started on creating your own masterpiece. And if you don't have watercolor paper or paints at home, don't worry. I'm going to show you some things around your house that you can use to help get you started. So first I want to talk about paper. Now not all paper is created equal. There are many different types. If you just have one type at home, go ahead and use it. And it, your project is still going to turn out wonderful. Um, but if you do have a variety to choose from, uh, there are a couple things that I want you to look for in your paper. So first, watercolor paper is thicker. It's a little bit stiffer. It doesn't bend as easy. And that way, when you wet it, um, the thicker paper, also it doesn't warp. So it's not curling up on the edges or anything like that. Um, you can tell if it has going to be more absorbent because we are working with watercolors and we want those colors to get absorbed into the paper as if you have a texture. So if you kind of look at it, if it's super smooth, it's just going to be harder for the watercolor to get absorbed into the paper. But if you have that texture, you're going to have a little bit more control. But use what you have and um, now let's talk about pigments. So when I talk about pigment, I mean the color that you're going to get using the watercolors. So one way is to use a pan set of watercolors. And if you don't have this at home, you can easily make it in your kitchen. So right now I have four pots going. And to make your own pigment, you do two cups of water, one cup of vegetables or fruit, and then let it boil and then let it simmer for an hour. So here I have some kale to make green. Here I have some carrots, some orange peels, and some yellow onion to make an orange. In this pot, I have created red cabbage, blackberry, and blueberries to make purple. And then in this one right here, I have beets, strawberries, blueberries and raspberries to make a red. So after they are done simmering, you are going to take a glass, um, your strainer, and then have someone help you, um, but go ahead and then pour it in. So you have your green, your orange, Purple one's my favorite because you get a nice rich color. Another option to use for watercolor paints is some leftover coffee if your parents or siblings are coffee drinkers. <laughs> and then it's a brown coffee stain, but it looks it looks really great for earthy landscapes or um, anything natural, if you're doing flowers or leaves, it can look really nice. Okay, so now let's talk about paint brushes. So now that we have our paper, our pigments, we can go ahead and get started painting with brushes. So your paintbrush is going to have a handle, and this is where your hands go. Then you have the furrow, and this is what I like to call like the danger zone. You don't want to hold down here. You shouldn't be holding on this metal part because that is uh, going to give you less, con um, less movement of the paintbrush, and it's going to be kind of harder to get nice fluid lines. Then you have the bristles, which is the top hairy part right here. And this is going, um, this is what soaks up the paint and allows you to apply it onto your surface nice and smooth. Now, if you don't have a paintbrush at home and they come in all different styles and shapes, you are, um, you can get creative with some different things at home. You can make your own by like cutting grass in the yard and taping it together, or uh, you could clean out your makeup bag or your sister's, your mom's, or anyone, or any family member's makeup bag and they have usually some brushes in them like that and you could ask to borrow one of those. And even if you do have watercolor paint brushes, um, it could be kind of fun to experiment with something different. So let's go ahead and experiment. 
So when we are starting our watercolor painting, it really does help to tape your paper to some sort of surface. Um, so a surface to prevent it from warping. I'm using a clipboard, but you could use a piece of cardboard, poster board, um, anything that's nice and flat. And I'm going to attach it with some masking tape. So now that your surface is prepped, you can go ahead and start experimenting with your different brushes. So I'm gonna use this makeup brush and I'm going to dip it in some purple and see what kind of, it's very transparent and that's what I love about watercolors is you can layer it on and make it as dark as you'd like, but to begin it all starts out very um, nice and transparent. And then a watercolor brush. Here's a flat. And then also a round. Let's try some different colors. So when I go to switch a color, I always want to rinse my paintbrush. And then shape it just gently in a paper towel to absorb that water. And then I can go ahead and try another color. We have orange, and this probably isn't showing up very well on the video, but it looks nice on paper. So now that we have a fresh new sheet of paper, I'm going to show you some different techniques. I'm going to first uh, break my paper up into a couple different sections to keep my techniques from blending, but you do not have to do this, it is optional. And I'm just going to use masking tape and I'm going to do about nine different sections. So the first uh, section I am going to show you is creating a glaze. And to start a glaze, we are going to use just a very light wash. So just an even section of color. And so that would be your basic wash, but later we are going to turn it into a, um, a glazing technique. The next section I will show you, let's go here. I'm going to show you using table salt, but that can add a really nice texture to your watercolor painting. So after you've covered your area with the watercolor, you're just going to take some salt and shake it out. Another one that I really love to do is using plastic wrap. Again, it gives a really awesome texture if you are doing um, like water or rocks. This one is really nice. So again, you cover the area with the watercolor first. And then you take plastic wrap and you kind of crumple it up and squish it down into the watercolor. And then you let it dry, and then you can pull it up to see the results after it's dried. I love for detailed work is taking, and this is just Elmer's rubber cement. And here I wanna go in, it has a big paintbrush, but here I wanna go in with a smaller one. And you can make a design, you can make circles. You could make wavy lines, zigzags, and then you need to wait till that dries before you paint over it. Um, to create a fade, a wash, that goes from dark to light, nice evenly, almost like an ombre effect, you're going to take your darker color and you are going to apply it pretty thick at the top. And then you can take, because your artwork is on a board or if you're just holding up by the paper, that's fine. You can tilt it up slightly and it will start to pool here and you just bring it down. And each time you can um, wash some of that pigment off your brush and get some clean water to make it get lighter each time it comes down. So this again is called a gradient wash.
So another technique that I like to do using watercolors is doing a fade into another color. So just similar to the one that we just did, you would start with your dark color on one side and then use that drop of water to bring it closer to the center and then use a color, a different color on the other side. And right now I'm using the red that was made with raspberries, strawberries, and beets. So once they kind of meet in the middle, you can kind of tilt your paper and allow them to mix a little bit more in the middle, which creates a really nice transition from the different colors. Another great technique to use is called wet on wet. So you take some clean water and wet the surface first. And then as you add watercolor, your watercolors are going to be able to move around a lot more freely, a lot more fluid. And it just gives the watercolor a lot of freedom to move around the paper. All right, now let's come back to our wax resist using the rubber cement. I'm gonna go back over, it should be, yep, it's all dry. I'm gonna go back over with the watercolor. And you can already see that the watercolor is resisting staying on top of the rubber cement. I have rubbing alcohol, you can add drops of rubbing alcohol and it makes a really cool spotted effect. And here is the same thing I did using normal watercolors. So the colors are a lot more bright, a lot more vibrant, um, but you can see that's kind of the effect that when you drop the rubbing alcohol that it gives. So let's see if this one's dry. It's pretty dry, so we can go ahead and add some glazing effect to this one. So you still get that wash underneath and then a design on top to add a little bit more dimension and value to your artwork. Another technique you can use is a sponge, um, especially if you have different sponges. So these all have kind of a different texture to them. And if you add some pigment onto the sponge, and just kind of put it on, you get a nice texture. So now that my watercolor technique paper is somewhat dry, you can kind of see how this dye um, dried a lot darker than the light wash we did underneath. Uh, this is a lot more fluid. Um, we take the plastic wrap off and you get this kind of cool organic with kind of some sharp edges texture. Over here, we can go ahead and rub off that rubber cement. And you can see the white um, paper underneath and how it kind of resisted um, that area. And then when you go ahead and peel off the tape, just like that wax resist, that tape is gonna um, resist the watercolor so you get these really nice clean edges. And there you have it. Kind of an experiment of all of your techniques. So send me pictures. I cannot wait to see what you guys experimented with. I keep all of my experiments. Yeah, I'm not using um, homemade watercolors. I'm using um, watercolor from the pan set such as this one by Prang. Um, but I just kind of go through and kind of do like experiment with different papers, experiment with like different styles of brushes, experiment with different, all different types of techniques. So there's so much that you can do beyond what I've done in this video. Just kind of see what it takes you. Practice mixing colors. One thing I love to do is, um, see the name of nail polishes underneath. This one's California Coral and kind of give fun names to the colors that I've mixed. But yep, yeah, go ahead, uh, practice, send me what you create. I cannot wait to see it.